Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. Let me tell you what, I am pumped for this video because we're getting into a new section and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna be start talking about debugging and you don't wanna skip this because it's an essential part of being a software developer. And you know what else you don't wanna skip? That's right, checking out our sponsor, DevMountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. All right, so I have this function here to calculate the factorial of something. And just as a refresher, if you don't know, the factorial will take a number and multiply it by every number lower than that. So if you pass in five, It'll do five times four times three times two times one, I think times one, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and the result should be 120. But as you can see here, we're getting 24. What in the world? I'm so terrible at this. How are we going to fix this? Well, the first instinct is to go in here and console log the total like so. And then what you can do is you can do a refresh and you can see what's happening. And that might be helpful. In a lot of circumstances, honestly, that's what I do. That's what a ton of developers do. It's no secret that everybody logs information before and after a calculation. That's just what people do. <laughs> but sometimes we want a little bit more uh, substance when it comes to debugging. Now, we're specifically going to be debugging with the Google Chrome developer tools. Other browsers are probably exactly the same, but there might be a little variation. So if you want to be exact, you can get Chrome. There's also extensions you can get and all kinds of other ways to debug, such as with IDEs. I even think Visual Studio Code has an extension for JavaScript development debugging. But we're just gonna start with the classic browser-based debugging, and that's what we're going to get used to first. So let's get rid of that console log. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sources tab up here. And over on the left, we're going to go into the JavaScript folder and select our JavaScript file. Now what you can do is you can set a breakpoint, and that's going to pause the execution of the program so it'll allow us to see the value of variables as we're going. So for example, we can put a breakpoint right here where that total would be calculated. Now when we refresh, it actually pauses at that point and tells us the, the, the value of the variables. So this is the very first iteration through the loop, and you can see x, the parameter here, the value passed in was 5, the total is 1, and X is still five here. Now what you can do is over here on the actual application window, which is really small right now, there's this little uh, button here, resume script execution. That's going to continue the, the program until it hits another breakpoint. Press it, now we're on the second iteration, and you can see total is now four. Press it again, total is 12. Press it again, we done. So let's do a refresh. And if you know how a factorial works, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to take five and multiply that by something. So we're starting with one, so then when we multiply, we have a value. So the first time it should be five, one times five. So we're starting with a total, which is going to keep track of the, the, uh, the result through these iterations. And it starts at one because we need to multiply by it and we need to retain that value. If we started with zero, we would just end up with zero. So the first time through it should be five, but when we run it, we see four. So the starting value is incorrect. We're multiplying by i, but i is one too low. There's two ways we can fix that. We can start the total at five. When we change the value here, that doesn't actually persist into our code, so we'll want to do it over here. Now we can save and go back to the console and see what the result is, 120. So that's one way to fix it. So we're basically doing five times four times three times two. The other way to fix this would be to actually start with five down here and have a total of one. Either way, it's going to work exactly the same. I do refresh, we get 120. That might be really easy to see by debugging this and going step by step because we can go in here, now do a refresh, and you can see after the first iteration, the total is five as it should be. Now there is something as a conditional breakpoint and to do that, you can right click your breakpoint and click edit breakpoint and now you can make some expression that will have to evaluate to true for this breakpoint to be hit. So for example, we can stop when total is greater than five, press enter. Now when we do a refresh, you can see it stops and total is 20. So it's stopping a couple more iterations in than what we were originally. So that's really useful if there's just one odd case out of like, you know, 
tons of iterations where there's some kind of bug happening and you want to stop right then and check. All right, that's all I got for you guys in this video. That should be your introduction to debugging. Obviously, there's a lot to it. A bunch of stuff down here and things. And it's a little overwhelming, but we'll, we'll get through it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.